All right, guys, so we've built our full stack Mern app and now I want to deploy it. All right. Um, but before we do that, there's just a couple small things I want to 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 deal with. So right here you see on an item reducer UUID is defined but never used. So I'm just going to go to my item reducer and get rid of that import because we don't need that. And then another thing I'm going to do is go to my public folder index HTML and just change the title from react app to Mern shopping list. Okay, so save that. And now we're going to get ready to deploy. Now we're going to be using Heroku and with react when you build a front end application there's a script with create react app and if we look in our client package.json let me close these up package.json we have this build so we can do npm run build and that'll take our react application and build it out into static assets that we could just upload to any server if it was just a front end app but this is not this is a full stack app we have an entire node server that an api that we have to deal with as well um, so that's where heroku comes in now i'm going to just stop this server here with control c And this is the by the way, this was the NPM run dev. It was running the the front end and the back end. And what we want to do is let me just show you if we run NPM, if we go into the client folder, so CD client and we do NPM run build, you don't have to do this, but you can if you want. It's going to take our react application and put it into a folder called di I'm sorry, not dist build. And if we look in that, it's still running. But once it's done, you'll see that we have an index HTML and this file points to this static JS main dot and then some numbers dot JS. And if we look at that file, so static JS main, all these numbers dot JS, this is basically everything we've done compiled. Okay, and there's there's no way that we can read this or understand this, at least for me. This is complete gibberish, but this is what is actually going to be loaded. Uh, now, up to this point, what we've been doing to basically have our front end and back end work together is we've had two servers. We've had the back end server and then we've had the 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 front end dev server that create react app gives us. That's that 3000 Uh, port server. Now on Heroku, we're not going to have access to that dev server, that front end dev server. It's going to look at our back end server JS file, which will run on um, on Heroku's port. But what we need to do is basically say unless we're hitting our API, which is API slash items or anything, any other API routes we had in here, then we want to hit the index HTML file right here to load our front end. So we're going to have to edit this server.js file just a little bit. Um, and we're in the build right here, the build folder. We're not going to do the NPM run build manually. What I want to do is create a post build script that will make it so that once we push to Heroku, it'll then automatically do the build there instead of us having to do it and push it to Heroku. So we can actually go ahead and delete this build file. If you've been following along, we can delete that. We don't need it. Uh, let's see, delete build from shore. Uh, and then we're going to edit this server JS file just a little bit. So we're going to go underneath our last th these routes right here above where we where we created the port. And we want to basically serve um, our static assets, which is that build folder um, if we're in production. Okay, so the way that we can do this is by using an if statement and we can check to see if we're in production by using process dot um, env dot node underscore env. So we're going to look at our node environment if it equals production. Okay, so if it equals production, then we want to set a static folder. Now to set this static folder, we're just going to say app.use and you guys have probably done this if you've if you have experience with Express. We say express dot static and we want the folder to be that that to load to be client slash build. 
So it'll load the index HTML in client build, which is what I just showed you. Uh, and then down here we want to say app dot get. So basically app dot get anything so we can use an asterisk here, then we want. Let's put in here request response and inside here. What we want to do is just load that index HTML file. All right. So this is actually setting the folder, the static folder here. We're going to any request that we get that's not this should load up that index HTML. Now I'm going to bring in a another module called path, which is a core Node.js module. So it's not we don't have to do NPM install path or anything like that. Um, so we're going to just require it. Path and it's just to deal with file paths. And what we want to do is we want to take the response here and we're going to do dot send file. And inside this send file, we're going to use path dot resolve. Okay, so we're using that path module and then we want the current directory. So double underscore der name and then we want to go into client and into build. And then we want to load the index HTML file. Okay, so we kind of load these as parameters and it's just basically directing it to that index HTML file and it should load it unless it's hitting the API. Okay, and as long as it's in production. So I think that that should do it. Let's go ahead and save this. Um, now what I want to do is create the post build script. So the post build script is going to go in our package.json of the server. Okay, make sure it's not your React application. Make sure it's the server where we have the this concurrently and stuff like that. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go right under here. We'll put a comma there and we're going to call this Heroku dash post build. And we want to set this. To, and this is going to look a little weird, but we're going to do npm underscore config underscore production equals false. Now, you may be asking, why are we setting production to false? The reason for that is because it's not going to it's not going to run the build script if it's not if it's in production. Um, so we have to set that to false just for this script. Once this is done, it'll be in production, but we have to set this flag right here for this to work correctly. So we want to set that to false Then we want to run npm install. There should only be one space here. So npm install and we want to make sure this is happening in the client folder. So we're going to do prefix dash dash prefix client. And then we want to do double ampersand because we also want to do npm run build and this is going to happen on the server and we want to again make sure this is in the client folder so we want to prefix with client. Okay, so hopefully uh, that makes sense. One second, let me just make sure this is right. So prefix client. All right. Uh, so once we have that, let's go ahead and save. So production false npm install. So basically it's just going to go into our into the client folder. It's going to install the dependencies. It's going to then run npm run build. So now let's get Heroku ready. So we'll close this up, close that up and let's go to Chrome and you're going to want the Heroku CLI. OK, and this is cross platform. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click download the installer. You can also use homebrew. I think I might actually have it installed. I'm not sure because I can't remember the last time I used Heroku on this particular machine, but I'll just install it again anyways, just in case. So let's see, it's fine and install. And by the way, we do all this in the Udemy course as well, and I explain things a little better because it's not it's not so much off the top of my head. All right, so that's installed. I'm going to just move the installer to the trash. That's not that doesn't matter. Um, so now we have the Heroku CLI installed and we should be able to run Heroku commands. So 
you need to sign up, obviously. So go to heroku.com, log in. Once you log in, you'll probably see something like this. You can see I do have a couple applications here. You'll probably, if you just signed up, you won't have anything here. Um, but then what we want to do is go to our terminal. Okay, so you want to be in your, not in your client folder, you want to be in the server. And we're going to say Heroku login. Uh, login credentials. So that is correct. Um, then my credentials. So you just want to going to want to put your Heroku ID in. Whoops, that was wrong. Try that again. Uh, email. That's good. Okay, so now I'm logged into Heroku in the CLI. Um, now what I want to do is create a new Heroku app from this directory. So we want to say Heroku create and then it's going to give you some weird ass name like this secure cove or whatever and now if i go back to my heroku dashboard and reload it you can see right here secure cove so you should now have this in your dashboard and not secure cove some other weird ass name you can see some of the other ones that that they've given me but we want to click on that and go to deploy now the way the method that we use to deploy to heroku is with git okay so make sure you have git installed um, whether you installed it on a mac with with homebrew or you used um, git bash or whatever it may be you want to have git installed and then you can see we already did this we logged in um, we you want to initialize a git repository i've already done this i've actually been making commits behind the scenes but you want to do git init to initialize a git repository and then you want to add your heroku re repository as a remote repository so i want to copy this okay you want to copy whatever is right here and go back to your terminal and let's clear this up and let's um, you know what so you again you want to do git init if you haven't already and then what I'm going to do is just add what I what I haven't added yet so I'm going to say add all and then let's do a git commit uh, I'm going to add the am flag and then I'm just going to say uh, version 1.0.0 whatever you can put whatever you want and then let's paste in what we just copied from Heroku okay so now we should be able to push to Heroku by saying get push Heroku master and now once I hit enter and we push to it it should run that put that post build script hopefully so let's try it Okay, so building dependencies, installing node modules, we should see something about the build script. Right here, so this is the right here Heroku post build, running Heroku post build, hopefully everything works out. These are the cross your fingers moments. Okay, let's go, let's go. All right, uh, let's see, looks good so far, so good. Creating an optimized production build. And I think it's gonna work, hopefully. All right, build succeeded. You can see there's a lot of room for screw ups. <laughs> All right, deployment done. All right, so now what we want to do is try the application. So let's see if we go to open app. Let's cross our fingers. And there it is. There's our deployed application. So let's make sure it actually works so we, we can see that it's actually listing the stuff. Let's delete milk. Okay, and just to reload, make sure that it's actually deleted from the database. Let's add an item. We'll go ahead and add eggs, add item, 
and there it is. We'll reload. And now we have a deployed Mern stack application. And of course, I mean, this is an ugly URL. So or an ugly domain. If you wanted to, you could go into settings. You can go down to domains. You can add a domain. Um, and of course, you'll have to register it somewhere. And then what you would do is just point the C name um, to uh, where is it? Uh, custom domains allow you. There's a documentation page that shows you exactly how to do it right here. You need to point your DNS to Heroku. So just follow this if you want to add a, an actual domain name. But it is deployed. It is live on the Internet. And I'm not going to leave this up because I know people will spam it and probably get my MLab account canceled. But um, I will put all the code on GitHub. Use it as a reference. Use it as a starting point. Um, you know, the point of this series was not to build a shopping list. The point of it was to show you how everything works together, how you can build your own bigger and better applications. And again, I do have a, a 16 hour course where we go into more depth and we use, um, you know, we protect our back end routes. We use JWT for authentication. So if you're interested more in the Mern stack, check that course out. I'll put a link for just 10 bucks in the description. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.